Hi, this is Mike. Um, today I'm gonna I'm gonna modify a, the uh, micrometer stop from my lathe, which is a Precision Matthews. Which is this is not a Taiwanese one; it's a Chinese lathe. Um, this is the micrometer stop. It sits on the uh, the lathe bed like so, and then this carriage hits this end. Well, the, the, it works, but it's really pretty awful. Um, the reason being is that this is the bottom. It clamps on here with a couple of socket head cap screws, like so. And it's got a couple of uh, grub screws in here you can use so you can get the give it a little angle for a better bite on the carriage, which is fine. It works. The problem is, is that when it sits on the carriage, to move it, other than you know turning the stop, which is not very well made anyway. You have to use a uh, Allen wrench from the bottom, which I've cut off because the lead screw sits about right here, and you, you can't even get a straight wrench. I could get a ball and wrench in there, but it's a pain in the butt. Um, so I got to looking at it, and I think I can get away with. I lost my cap screw. Anyway, I think I can get away with leaving one of the one of the cap screws in the bottom and then drilling a hole all the way through between here and the uh, adjustment screw or the stop I should say go all the way through thread the bottom plate and then put a counter bore at the top and there's just not a lot of extra clearance I had a quarter inch cap screw here but it must have moved to my other bench. Anyway, it, it'll show up later. Um, but I, I did a little bit of a cheesy drawing, which I'm not a very good artist. However, I just traced the outline, so it's it uh, it is fairly realistic. So basically, I have to offset my hole by a three. I got about three eighths of an inch between the edge. this out of the way. So I've got about 3 16 between the edge of here and or 3 8 from here to the line drawn down to here so that puts my whole my bolt 3 16 in there with a quarter inch bolt that leaves me a 16th on each side which is fine on the side to side because it'll have plenty of meat on this direction. Um, this is just cast iron so it's um, it's okay. It's been fly cut, so it's relatively smooth to hold in the vise. Um, so I'll just drill it a quarter inch through, and uh, the bottom piece sits on there like so in, uh, in the real world, like this. So I will. What I'm going to do is screw this. Take the grub screws out. Screw this on. Drill the hole through it with a tap drill so everything lines up good. Tap this and then drill the larger hole bigger and put a counter bore in it. Um, and uh, with any luck it will all work and everything will be okay. I've done some just a cheesy drawing just so that I drill the holes in the right place. Um, so the other thing is it has this micrometer dial and I, I hate to use the term because it's anything but precision but it is okay and it, it does adjust the stop so that you can make repeatable stops on the carriage this is just rough ground on the end it's not even square so I'm gonna put that in lathe and face that off and make it square um, the other thing I want to do is uh, drill and tap another hole in here it's got Oh, one. It's got a grub screw in here that's actually got a uh, machine part on the end that rides this out of here. It rides in this slot so that it, it uh, you know keeps it from going back and forth. The problem is is that uh, this this thread is a lousy. It's not a precision fit. So once it's adjusted, this will turn, and I could easily, you know, I could snug the grub screw to keep it from moving, 
but I thought what I would do is put a uh, either on the top or on the side put a, a, a thumb nut in there so that I could snug it up against this or maybe even in the same slot which I can you know I've got room there's not a lot of extra thread but if I go through the top I've got some 832 thumb screws. Uh, I have to cut them to length, but that's okay. Uh, that, that would give me a nice adjustment for it so that I could keep the one in there with some Loctite so that it, you know it's uh, in there as a guide pin and then just be able to snug that up. Anyway, uh, part of what I got to do is we'll take these adjustment screws out of here. So we'll start by putting this on and getting it nice and snug and then we'll put the whole thing over to the middle and put it in the vise and crank it all down and, and uh, find our edge and drill some holes and see what happens. We came over to the mill and to figure out exactly where to drill the hole based off of the uh, back child device we'll measure the thickness of this which is 1.151 so we're going to take 1.151 and we need to come over 187 thousandths from that so we need to you know subtract 1875 which is 3 16 Mr. Handy Calculator says that that is 963 and a half which you know who cares um, so we need to from here to the center of the drill is 9635 so what we'll do is put this guy in the vise so we're going to do it on this end because um, this is where our, our hole is uh, because it's fairly high and I want to do it from the top, I can't put any parallels under it. I won't have room for a drill to come out. So what I'm going to do is hang the end over the opening in the middle of the vise just slightly. And then uh, snug it down a little. Give it a love tap. Should be good there. So we'll come in 963 there and 187.5 from that end. So you can hear me over the uh, phase converter runs in the other room. It's not the quietest thing in the world. Not too bad though. Okay, we are in low. So let's come over here. The top of their edge finder. Throw the Y on there. We'll come in a hundred thousandths. It's a two hundred thousandths edge finder. So there's an you know, excellent long direction. Go the other way on. Okay. 
left, which is 3 sixteenths. There, we'll lock off the X. Just line this up, make sure it looks like everything's in the right place. Got to the table a little bit so I can get it drilled in there.
short. I'd rather it be too short than too long. So we'll do that. And when the tape touches this, we'll stop. And it's a trick someone taught me at some point. The nice thing is, is you can tell even when there's chips or sawdust on it, if you're doing all wood, as the little flag of the tape starts sweeping them out of the way, which is kind of cool. All right. So we'll just Ok, 
Okay, let's have a look. So you can see it's right up against the edge, but that's expected since I went in 3 16 and this is 3 8 so it's just, just breaking through. And given the rough edge I had to go off along here, that's not so bad. But the good part is, is it's through everything else. Here's where we're going to tap it. And this didn't move after we tightened it down, so put this piece in, find our hole, or at least off close to it, and uh, tap that. And uh, this actually should be, other than a grub screw, or a uh, thumb screw, should be pretty much good to go. Got my pound wrench. And this will be, you'll see how close we got with our hole going through. It's just, can't see it on camera, but there might be, might be a 30 second left on here, which is what I wanted. I'd rather be shy than go all the way through. So we can fix that with hand real easy enough. So I'm putting some of the dust out of this thing. Build it from this direction. I think I'm going to put it back in the vise this direction. So we'll get some inch and a three eighths or so parallels. These are inch and three three eighths. Check back in. Drop this down a ways. So there's lots of fancy ways to find this hole. But given what we're doing, I'm not going to go to the trouble of indicating it. Just line it up to where the drill drops in real easy, which will get us within a thousandth or two. And it drops in without any drag, so plenty good for that. Lock it off again. Alright, I was gonna I was gonna hand tap this, but this cast iron is really soft. I've got a nice spiral point tap. So we're gonna just gonna try to do this and uh, you know, I better tighten it a little better. And hopefully we won't break anything. And, uh, let's see what's our slowest speed. It's pretty pretty snappy. We're gonna just just come down, shut it off, and let it go in. We'll get a cutting fluid. So that looks pretty good. We'll just feed it through by hand. Thread's good. So here's the moment of truth with this. Whoops. Almost forgot. 
Okay, here's our quarter inch bit. It should just. Yep, it's all it took. Just a hair on the end. Now we have our moment of truth. See how this all lines up? It should work well. It certainly lines up good. So that's good. It lines up. So when I go to put it on the lathe, I will put in the back screw and get it pretty snug so that it'll still move and then probably Loctite it so it won't move. And then use the little grub screws in there and then I should be able to just snug it up with this and it uh, should stay put. Turn the camera around, we'll find out. Okay, you can see my not very clean at the moment lathe. So I have, uh, I put our two little grub screws in. You can see them poking out right here. I did not put the uh, stop screw in yet. I'm still going to redo that. So this just drops on there. And normally you can have these two socket head screws under here. You can see with the lead screw right here, you just can't even get a wrench on there straight. Instead of ball and driver would work, but then you can't get much torque on it. So we'll get this fairly snugged up. We'll go a little further. Courtesy of the lovely folks at McMaster Car, I've got uh, some nice uh, stainless steel 832 thumb nuts. So just thread that. I mean, it's only got about a quarter inch, but with the 832, I'll still have five, six threads in there, which should be good. So I'll just drill and tap that. I made sure that I don't know. And then uh, our piece will be good. So I think I will uh, do that first. And maybe I'll face that thing off.